Another version of the pancake die that I offer is what I call the donut die, which allows us to cut out a part and a hole out of that part at the same time. The idea first came about from Eddie Bell at Rio Grande in around 1986 when they were selling the RT blanking system, which was the first commercial presentation of uh, pancake dies. And he got the idea of taking a regular pancake die, which is what this front plate is. It's got the regular the hinge, and this outer ring cuts the outer perimeter of the die, of the part. And uh, his idea was to cut the center all the way out and attach it to its own plate. So basically what you have is two dies, the regular front one that cuts the part out going this direction and the secondary die which cuts the uh, center hole out from the other direction. So we'll run one of those. And Now the center hole falls out nicely, but the piece that cuts the center hole out creates an overhang, and so the part is stuck underneath that overhang. And the way to get that out of there is with a stripper plate, which has a bunch of screws in it that line up with these holes that line up with that piece. So you use that plate to push the part out. That's a very cooperative one because the part comes out very easily with just thumb pressure. Not all these donut dies behave the same way. And it's a little bit unpredictable too. This particular one, you can actually operate this. The point of the screwdriver is to pry these two parts far enough apart so that when the, you use your stripper plate, the, they don't close up and keep the part from coming out or getting stuck up in the front part of the die. That this one is very cooperative. I was using this one today without the screwdriver, just by holding the die open with my hand and pushing it like that. So that's again, that's a very cooperative one. I like it when they turn out like that. Opening them back up. Well, you saw me bang on that. That cracks these two main plates open, but doesn't necessarily open up the the main die here. So the point of the, effectively you need to have these two plates together and this one up. So you can do that by smacking this outer part. Sometimes by banging it more like this. And even um, once in a while it works, in some cases it works to put that stripper plate in there and press down. See how that opens up the main die part here. But of course the fastest way is just to smack it like that until it opens up. Now these center pieces are, depending on the size of the holes and the, the amount of room I have, I like to use these flathead socket screws with the Torx head there and uh, crank those down. That holds the piece on pretty well. Some designs don't have enough room for those screw heads, so, and this is a good, good example of that. Each of these little four pieces is attached with pins that I silver soldered the, them to the back plate with. So let's run this turtle. Uh, it opens up nicely.
Now, because that has such a complex hole configuration, it's going to take more force to get that piece out of there. And I, you don't nest, I don't always use uh, metal screws in that case. The nylon screws that I use for this one are much nicer to the front of your piece. But they're not as durable, so sometimes I'll use metal screws for that because they can withstand the pressure it sometimes takes to bang them out of there, bang the piece out of there. But this one is also very cooperative. So even though it, the metal screws contacted the front of this piece, taking it out, there's it, there's a little dings, but no real uh, distortion, as can happen. Here's an older one I did. You can see some distortion right in here. Just because it's so complex in there, and I have to place these screws and screw holes in as many places as I can so that the force is distributed all of the places that it's needed to get that part out of there. Now, being screwed together here at the bottom, these two main plates, it's very important to keep these joints tight and you can never put the screws all the way in the press. You have that kind of situation, you're going to damage your press, you're going to damage the screws, maybe mess up your die. So always want to leave it out just by enough to barely grab onto is good. You want it you want it in the press pretty far so that the work is centered under your press, ideally. But leave yourself enough to grab onto and definitely leave your screws out. Watch out for that kind of thing too. Yeah, so keep uh, keep these screws tight. If if your die is one with these countersunk screws, always keep those tight. And that will keep your die aligned, which is the absolutely essential. As soon as you have misalignment problems, the part will start to leave burrs. If if it gets bad, the part might stick in the die. Other than just the fact that it's stuck underneath the overhang here on the inside there. And when that happens, you could be in serious trouble. The best thing to do is uh, send the die back, get a hold of me, have me look at it. Maybe I can fix it, uh, realign it. Sometimes I'll take these apart, realign them, and screw them back down, and everything's good to go again. And uh, like I said, if I get get a hold of them soon enough, then um, we can prevent the kind of real damage that uh, that makes them unfixable.